what is a performance taper? So if you um, are an athlete um, preparing for competition, what is a taper? What does it mean to taper? Um, how does it look? What's the best way to set it up? Okay. Um, before I get started, there's a really good book, and there's a, a, I haven't read the newest edition, um, by probably the most prolific researcher in tapering. I'm going to probably butcher his name, so forgive me if I do. Indigo Mejica. Um, I'll put his book up right there. Uh, take a look at it. I highly recommend it. Easy read, especially if you're a coach, trainer, uh, you're an athlete. Okay, It's worth your time to look through it. Um, I was going to do a book review on it, but I, I'm kind of rolling it into this, this video. But let's talk about tapering. Okay. A taper is um, essentially a, a deload, okay, performance taper before competition. If, if you haven't seen my video on the fitness fatigue model, I, I recommend you go watch it, um, an understanding training theory. And so what happens over time when a very, I'll talk about it briefly here so you understand that over time in any area of training, let's say you um, are a soccer player and you're lifting weights and you're doing conditioning, okay, and you've done it in a way that makes sense in terms of your programming. Uh, and towards the end of your, your cycle, you um, are the intensity is the highest. If you think about a traditional model where you, your intensity is higher over time and, and your volume drops off, but you still have accumulated fatigue throughout that cycle. Now, your fitness is high, but fatigue may be a little higher than you'd like to going into a competition or going to a camp or whatever it may be. And so what you would do for a predetermined, predetermined amount of time is pull the volume down. So I always like to say volume kills and volume builds. Okay, volume kills and volume builds. And you're like, what about intensity? Does intensity intensity is important? But think about it. Intensity is only as effective as how much volume you can do. So that's why doing, you know, um, three set uh, three singles with a squat isn't going to make you as strong over time as doing three sets of five. You know, with eighty two and a half percent, eighty percent of the squat. Okay, it's just volume accumulated. So yes, the intensity with the ninety is important. It's good, but intensity does a really good job of holding strength. It doesn't do, when you clear about 90, it doesn't do a great job of building strength. There's just not enough volume to practice with, if you will. There's not enough volume to generate muscle hypertrophy, the stimulus for muscle hypertrophy. I'm not saying it won't happen. It's just on a sliding scale. You have to find that sweet spot of getting exposure to intensity and enough exposure to volume in order to see any production, any change that occurs. So that's why, again, high intensity only is not going to necessarily make you stronger. You're better with working with those weights. And if you're a power lifter or a weightlifter, that's very helpful. I do that all the time with my weightlifters. They have to, I mean, that's the sport. You have to, you're trying to push one RM type of stuff. <laughs> you're trying to PR and heavy loads. But if um, we're just trying to get stronger, like in squat, I don't want to just do heavy singles all the time. Doesn't mean I won't do them. It just means that if in a strength cycle, that's not what I'm going to do. Okay. Now I could do multiple 90% reps, um, but I'm still going to not be able to do as many as I would do 85% in a total session. So keep that in mind. Even though, you know, the intensity is high, it's the volume that builds and kills. Okay. And so if we're in the traditional cycle of any sort of, sort of athletics and you get up to that last week um, before your taper or weeks before taper, um, you're going to pull the volume down. And that's what a taper essentially is. You can pull the intensity down a little bit. Remember, I just said a little bit ago, intensity keeps things. It holds things. If you, you know, if you do your conditioning uh, bike sprint workout, one-to-one -one ratio workout, see my work to rest ratio video if you haven't already on conditioning, um, that intensity, if you only do half of those, but man, you go hard for five minutes or, you know, eight rounds and you've been doing 20, okay, you pull the volume down over half, but you're really going hard. You're going to hold your fitness uh, uh, pretty well, for at least for a time, okay? And the time may be just long enough, your taper in order to allow your body to recover and maintain fitness. So that's the whole point of a taper is we're trying to maintain fitness as fatigue's been rising. And now the taper happens and fatigue drops and fitness may drop just a little bit, but not enough to really be noticeable. And we I always say suck the fatigue out. We suck the fatigue out. And now the difference between fitness and fatigue is bigger than it was as we head into our competition. Okay. That's what a taper is supposed to do. Okay. In powerlifting, um, it's not uncommon for powerlifters to take a week off completely. They've been beating their bodies up. They've been working hard. The sport, I, I'm, and I know I'm going to make some powerlifters mad. It's not as technical as other, like weightlifting. Okay. So they don't have to stay in touch with their technique as much. I'm not saying it isn't technical. I'm just saying it's not as technical as like a snatch. And so they could take a whole week off with the idea of like they've been smashing, 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 and then they, they, they taper off for a whole week of doing nothing and they recover and they feel great. Okay. I had this happen in my own life a few times when I was a dumb high school athlete is like, I, you know, the bench press. So I would bench, 
one day I'd hit a heavy day, next day I'd do a volume day, and I would just smash, 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 and I'd get sick every once in a while, right? And I wouldn't be able to lift for a week. I thought, man, my lifts are going to be horrible. And so I'd come back after a week of not lifting at all, and I'd come in and I'd just smash load, right, on that first day back. Like, I'm too, you know, I was too stupid to realize what happened. I'm like, I don't understand. Why did I, why do I feel great coming off of being sick? When I didn't do anything, shouldn't I feel, is that taper? I washed out the fatigue. I sucked out the fatigue. I may have lost a little fitness, but nothing that really would show up enough to, to deter a PR or to deter from progress. Okay. And that's, that's what a taper is. A taper is a a systematic programming technique to pull fatigue out. Okay. And leave the fitness gains. Now the timing is going to be important because if you, pull the volume down for too long a period of time, you can have fitness decline. Okay. So if I taper for a month, I'm more than likely going to see that fatigue come out. And then over time, fitness will start to decline. And over the course of a month, yeah, my fitness won't bottom out, but it'll decline um, enough that I would notice. Okay. So timing of the taper is important. All right. So that's what a taper is. I'm talking about timing now. Let me just add one more thing in here. Who needs the taper? If you're um, an athlete of a training age that you've been training for six weeks, you probably do not need a taper, okay? Because you haven't, you're, the amount of fatigue that you've accumulated is not worth tapering over. In fact, if you taper, I mean, your, your fitness levels aren't really that established. They're not stable as the old Soviet scientists used to call it, stable, the stability of training. And you could actually see a decline in performance. So um, for young athletes, the taper doesn't have to be significant um, going into a competition, all right. Now, if, and, and, and so, well, how do you define what you're, well, if, if you're in a training cycle, that's over 12, uh, over six weeks, about 10 weeks, or you've been training for more than one cycle, then I'd say you, you could benefit from a taper, at least experimenting with it. Um, if you notice that your lifts and your performance is declining over the course of a cycle, especially towards the end, usually I like to run four week cycles in week three. If you notice like, man, my performance, I'm really starting to feel tired. Okay. The taper may be warranted there. Okay. But for a lot of like young training age athletes, or individuals, you know, you if you just started doing powerlifting, I mean, you're just learning how to lift. Like your technique isn't even established yet. If you're learning how to weightlifting, you're just learning how to squat. You've been sore a little bit, yeah, but you haven't really had the chance to push yourself, and your body doesn't understand neurologically how to reach those higher threshold motor units uh, enough in order to generate so much fatigue that you would benefit from a taper. Okay, so it, that's a very vague cutoff and some vague advice there, but. Anything over a six-week program, you probably could taper. It, again, it depends, though. If you're not really feeling fatigued, I wouldn't worry about it. And if you're a coach, if you're in a bunch of junior high kids that have never lifted before and you get them for three weeks before a season, no need to taper them. In fact, just keep lifting during the season. And we can talk about that in another video about I think coaches mess that up sometimes. They taper in the weight room too quickly um, or they, they pull that back too quickly in a season. So anyway, tapering. Now, uh, tapering for, you know, who is it for? For somebody who's been training for a while. And I'm talking about tapering anything. I've been talking about the barbell sports here, but you taper your conditioning, like I mentioned just a little bit ago. You taper your lifting. You taper your plyos. You taper, right? But a taper is not pulling the intensity down too much. So if you've been running at 90%, don't drop down to 70. You got to maintain that intensity. That's part of it. You've seen this in the research literature from my experience is, you know, it, you know, I don't like the, the only example I can give you the powerlifting where they just don't do anything. I would rather do that than pull the intensity down to 65%, right? Or 70%. If you're running at 90%, drop to 85% and pull your volume down. Okay, don't drop to 75%. There's value in maintaining intensity is what I'm getting at. Okay, um, even powerlifters, not all powerlifters do the, the complete week off. I'm not a big fan of that personally. Um, but but I can see you know the justification for it. Uh, an Olympic style weightlifter wouldn't want to do that because they have to maintain the technique, the snatch technique associated, right? And so, you know, all the techniques of the exercise, especially the snatch, they need to remember how to, they, they need that patterning over and over again to maintain technical proficiency. So going out through a week, they might have a high intensity day to finish and then a seven day taper. And I'll talk about timing here in a second. So let's talk about it right now. Timing of a taper. How long do you taper? Um, what, you know, again, how does that look over a week? Um, so it is for most individuals that are not elite, like you're not an Olympic level, um, Olympic style weightlifter. You're not a, a professional athlete that has years of accumulated volume, years and years and years. And you put, you know, you, you really push hard for you know, the cycle up. Um, a t- a, typically a seven day taper is about right. If you're a master's athlete, it may be longer. Okay. If you're a bigger athlete, it may be longer. All right. 
So let me give you an example from my own coaching experience. Um, a female lifter tends to recover faster than males. So a smaller female lifter, um, I can have them taper around six days out, meaning that doesn't mean they have a high volume day, but they're going to have a heavy day on a Monday and lift on Saturday. And in between then, they'll have their, their higher volume, heaviest day, they might hit their openers and then have a squat day that's a higher intensity, not necessarily a higher volume. And then the next day, they'll have an 85% day of some sort of variant and then a really light training day the day before just to do some technique and move around and then they'll lift. So that's less than seven days. If I had a super heavyweight, I might have him or her, especially a him, 10 days out, especially in the clean and jerk, because it might take them longer to recover. Now, this is just in, in general, okay? There's world-class athletes that will, <laughs> in weightlifting, that'll hit a PR in a weightlifting meet at Worlds and then turn around and do the sa- almost the same thing in training a few days later. Now, I don't know what pharmaceutical things are going on, or, but you know, let's assume that there isn't. That just shows you, though, the difference between you know, that's why they're high level athletes. So that I saw that in my own experience working with um, high level athletes. That tends to be the, the number one thing that I, I see. And it makes sense when you look at PEDS is recovery. How fast somebody can recover. The faster you recover, the more volume you can be exposed to again and do the same workout. Therefore, your body adapts faster. Most of us that um, like me that are not a high level athlete when I was playing and was not on PEDS, my recovery time is going to take longer. So my total exposure to volume is going to be less over time. Okay. And so I won't see as much much benefit. Okay. So, um, that just shows you the differential though. That's why I said seven days in general is a good time mark, six to seven days. Um, you know, in terms of the last biggest intensity, in terms of the last biggest volume dose, um, I like at least seven days, if not more. So for example, the, the, the small, um, female weightlifter, her last, assuming she's not cutting weight and thing, her last volume dose would be that Friday before the meet next Saturday. Okay, so that's seven, eight days. So volume dose, I mean, some sort of squat workout that has a little bit of volume. It doesn't mean I'm doing like, you know, five sets of 10. It just means I might do three sets of five. But that's the last volume dose around a week out. Okay, if it's a bigger athlete, it may be even longer. So that's, so the, and this, I'm using Olympic style weight, I think, because this thing I coached recently. But the, the, the squat for the bigger lifter, the super heavyweight, you know, it might be a Wednesday of the previous week for volume. And then, you might ha- still snatch heavy that f- Monday before the week of the meet. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Like there, we have two different timelines going here in general though, seven days. If you're a soccer athlete though, let's get back to general sports here, other sports, field and court sports. If you're trying to taper out um, your lifts and your conditioning that, you know, if, if, if your major thing is a Monday, the Monday prior would be the last day you had any sort of volume. So you might have a weekend, if you want to have any sort of volume boost, do it that final, that last Monday, and that leaves you a full seven days to taper down and recover before you, you know, your big testing day or a big match or whatever it may be the following week. All right. So the general rules that Dr. Mahika outlines is the ones I follow, and here they are: seven to fourteen days taper length, a reduction in forty per six, forty to sixty percent in volume over that time period. Okay, over that time period. So it's a very uh, significant drop in volume. Okay. So let's say, um, uh, for squatting. Okay. You're doing 15 reps in your squat workout at, uh, you know, 85% roughly a little bit lower than that, probably 80, especially if you're more type two, but anyway, let's say 85%, just to make it easy. And so throughout the week, okay. You do your squat at 85%. Okay. And now you drop it out 40 to 60%. And so you have 15 reps. Now you're doing only doing like six by the week's end. Okay, your last that Friday workout before you go and uh, do your competition or whatever it is on the next Monday, you're only doing five or six reps. So it's very short. It's all about volume suck out. And a lot of times as athletes um, and coaches were afraid to do that because like, well, they're not doing anything. We shouldn't work hard all the way up. To, if they need a taper, taper hard at the end. And that's when we get into the shape. What should the shape look like? Okay, should it be a linear thing where we just, you know, 85, uh, you know, uh, in terms of volume, 15 reps. You know, 10 reps, 7 reps, 5 reps. No, that's a linear decline. The body is like, well, you know, it it declines in that same kind of fashion. You want to suck the the, the fatigue out. You want to pull it out quickly. And so it's more of an exponential. You pull it out fast. So you're at 15 reps, boom, right down to 5. That's a fast drawdown on volume. Very fast. And so what that does is it's kind of like pulling the bottom out of, of, you know, uh, off of of a floor here, stepping so fitness is high, fatigue, like, okay, fatigue's high, fitness high. And you're like, oh, boom, the bottom just dropped out of fatigue. Now how that fitness is still floating. And so I should have some really nice performance as a result of that. Because again, that gap between fitness and fatigue is quite large. All right. And so 
um, the shape. The the other one is a step down. That's probably okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise that one. I would stick. I say probably because there's some research say it might be effective, but uh, my experience as a coach and um, based on uh, Dr. Mika's research, um, a exponential, right, an exponential drop in volume is best. You just basically pull the you know, you pull the roll, the rug out from underneath the person in terms of their their training volume, um, and and pull suck out that fatigue quickly. You'll find a little more of this information in my book, by the way, Foundation of Weight Training. I give some examples as well if you want to check out my book. Um, that sounds like an upsell. I guess it is. Why not? Why not plug the book? Um, but um, tapering is, and mastering tapering um, is very important. If you're an endurance athlete, it's important. Like mastering tapering and keeping intensity high, keeping blood volume up. If you're an endurance athlete in that last week or, or 10 days as you start to taper down, keeping the intensity high is going to be important. Don't pull the intensity down. That's a mistake I see athletes do quite a bit. Don't pull the intensity down. Now, I'm, what I mean by this, don't pull it all the way down. You, you might again, you might be up ninety percent in some activity, or maybe even hundred all out running. But you, you know, keep it up in the mid eighties at least um, when you're looking at doing a drawdown on volume. Okay, intensity holds. Intensity holds in, in the world of strength. If you if you have a, a a large training age, intensity will hold for up to two to three weeks. Your strength levels. Okay, it'll start to dec decay a little bit, but they will hold for roughly that time. All right, this video is way too long. Apologize for that. Hopefully, you stuck in here to the end. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, say uh, like, say it. Okay, say it out loud too. Like the video. Uh, be a subscriber to my channel. All kinds of different topics, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.